In this episode of Mighty Car Mods, the end is in sight for our mad supercharged mini project. Welcome to another episode of Mighty Car Mods, proudly supported by Just Car Insurance. And let me just say, Martin, double up. Double episode? Double with two episodes this week. That's pretty That's exciting, epic, isn't it? I'm excited. You know what I'm excited about? Double the mini. Do it's I'm half excited. the size and twice the girth. Hey, you know when you get Apparently a house... Apparently people like that. You know when you get a house brick and it breaks in half? Yes. You know when you're doing a house brick and then you've got two house bricks? That's like what this is. Is it? No. Do you know what I'm excited about? Yes! Dude, we finally got chop shirts! Finally! Look at that, you got chopped on the front, so anyone coming knows they got chopped. And then, on the back it says chop, so fools know they got chopped. That's right, as you stride and pass like an absolute boss. Right. Uh, you can get them from MightyCarmels.com. We'll ship them anywhere in the world, but... Let us get back, Martin, to the mini madness. Why don't we give that t-shirt away to whoever leaves the funniest comment? Done. Should we give it away? Done. Most thumbs up and we think is the funniest. The most thumbed up and funniest, you can have this t-shirt. Awesome. Um, so what are we doing? Alright, good. What's so what are we doing? doing? I'm very, very glad you asked, Martin. Today, um, I don't want to get crazy and say we're finishing the mini today. Are we finishing but I, the mini But today? I could be getting loco and I think we're getting very, very close. So today, we're installing the ECU. We're plumbing up the flex fuel sensor. Mad. We're putting in the air temperature sensor. Mad. You have to make the exhaust okay. and finish it. Um, and we've got to finish some fuel lines, we've got some more parts coming. So we're going to basically be done after today. Look, today's a big one. Today is a big one. What I will say though, Martin, is that this has taken a lot longer than any of us could have expected, which is not a bad thing because we're hanging out playing with cars every day. Miles loves it. He's just living the dream over there. But what I will say is this is like an undocumented case. We are like archaeologists looking into the sphincter. I mean, into the Sphinx. The Sphinx. So we're, we're looking into the... Where, uh, Do you know what it is as well? It, and I think anyone who's built a car will probably, will probably realise this, is that it never just takes Saturday morning. You know when you get to Saturday morning, well, I, I do this anyway. I get up at like 8 o'clock and I'm like, right, I'm going to do this thing on my car. By midday, I'm going to be out cruising, like cruising around with my mates. Yeah. And then it's like the following Friday. Yeah. And the thing that you the got... The following Friday, we're sneaking home in the middle of the night with no bumper <laughs> bar on and a front mount hanging out so we don't get pulled yeah. over like in the middle of the night. So no, it's just... There's a bit of that, but it's also it's also fun. Because you learn... This is how you learn stuff. Yeah. But just... And no one's done it. Like, like already... Oh, well, they, they have done it, but JDM Minis are so rare. And then this kind of... Like, supercharging them... This it, combination. Like, you know, there's, there's no information. And then... And then this combination is, well, it's just crazy. It's like it's a combination soup where you don't know what you're going to get. Like they might say combination soup and that might mean beef, but then you might get one that's beef and tofu and you've got like beef, tofu and chicken and the chicken's been thrown in there just to mess you up. Uh, on that note, combination soup means that there's a combination of short noodles and long noodles, so you do know what you're going to get. Uh, but anyway, uh, let's, uh, <laughs> more mini madness. Let's get to this. The first thing we need to do is find somewhere that we can mount up our ECU in an engine bay that is starting to seriously run out of space. To keep everything neat and tidy in the engine bay, we are going to use the existing factory bracket that held the original ECU in there. And we're gonna mark that up and we're gonna mount our Haltec Elite inside there. This is totally waterproof, totally fine to go inside the engine bay. That's gonna get mounted up there and then we can put that in the same location as the original factory ECU. As the build progresses, it's getting more challenging. Because the engine bay in the Mini is so tiny, it's becoming really hard to fit anything else in there. Apart from the tuning capabilities of this ECU, it's also a much smaller and much lighter option than the original one that came with the car. But before we install the ECU properly, we're going to plug it into a laptop and make sure it powers up and communicates with the tuning software. And success! We are connected to the ECU, so we're celebrating with a cornflake chocolate thing. And more parts have just arrived. So we've just had another awesome delivery. And if this is what we think it is, Miles, that means we can finish our fuel system. Is that correct? That is correct. Unless it's just something completely different, like Marty's sex toy. I was just going to say, maybe Marty may have ordered something we didn't know about. Let's have a look. We all know Marty's sex toy is his car. Oh, look at this. Here you go. 
Aeroflow, Aeroflow, Aeroflow. This is everything we need. And vacuum hose. There we go, vacuum hose. More hose. There's heaps of hose in here, Marty. What what area code are they from? All over, mate. There we go, that's it. Yeah, Perfect. man! Ah! <laughs> it works! What's going on, man? It works. Are we hell taking on a mini? Your mini's alive. Yes. Like it's it's communicating to the outside world through its digits. That's so good. Fantastic. That's gonna work. Where's the boost button? There isn't one yet. We have successfully connected the software and can start setting it up to run our mad old mini. This really is a meeting of two very different automotive eras, with an engine that's essentially 50 year old technology being run and controlled by cutting edge software that is made and developed in Australia. has been an epic amount of work, but our loom is finished and ready to install back into the engine bay. So many times we lose a moment of our lives. I don't need anything, but no one needs you now. We've been wasting all our time. The ECU is plugged in, so now we can plumb up our flex fuel sensor. A flex fuel sensor measures the amount of ethanol in the car's fuel system, and when this information is passed onto the Haltech ECU, the tune automatically applies fuel, ignition and boost corrections to make the best power based on the fuel content. This means the car can run on standard 98 octane pump fuel or E85 race fuel like what's used in the V8 supercars, or a combination of both. Not only does the E85 that we get have an octane rating of 105, it also has a beneficial side effect in that it will cool the supercharger. Dude, all this talk of ethanol, you're coming with me. Am I, Mum? I need to explain some things to you. Do you, Mum? And we're going to go buy my little stash of goodness here. Now you have the blue pill or the mad pill. Yes. And you get to choose, or you can mix them infinitely. I like that. You know what that means? The infinite sphincter. Well, this is what your flex fuel sensor is going to do. Anyway, come with me. I will show you in practice. Do we need this? We need this one. Do you have to do that every time you drive, Martin? Not always. Depends how far you are from a servo. All right, teach me, Martin. What's this, Martin? How is that? You know, Miles. Does that say brap brap or fat fat? It says BP, which is what my thing is, and. They read backwards in Japan. It's a hyper rev from Japan. Miles got it for me. Miles meals off the Mighty Car Mods forum. Dude, that's awesome. Yeah, it's mad. They're all like steering. Anyway, we'll talk about that later. Ethanol. Oh, so, oh sorry. Yes, back to ethanol. So, Martin, tell me things. You've been eating a Snickers, Martin. That was your Snickers. Was it? I was going to say, day. they are my favourite. You're a Snickers fiend. Okay, Martin, let's go. This is the important one. Ready? E flex. See that number? Yes. That's a percentage. And that is that little E-flex sensor that's on your firewall sending a signal through to the ECU to say how much E-flex, how much um, ethanol is in the fuel. And that's what makes me go fast? Well, not necessarily makes you go fast, but it, it gives you a... Um, oh, gives I you got a seatbelt man, hold on a second. Click, clack, front and crack. <laughs> in your case, because your motor's gonna be quite high compression, and because we're adding forced induction, this is where ethanol is quite useful. Okay. As a fuel, there's heaps of nerdy reasons for it. I'm not going to get too intense with all the nerdy reasons for it because I'll probably get something wrong. But basically, because of the higher octane, it's going to be more resistant to detonation. Right. So, and from what I understand, that the the octane can vary depending on where you get it from, like a hundred and five to 107 or, yeah. or, a, or more even in some cases depending right. on where you are. Ethanol itself, I mean ethanol is pretty basic in the, in the fact that it's alcohol, it's moonshine. It's what you can, you can bake it up to a certain percentage but the humans have got really good at refining it right up to like 100% ethanol, really, okay. really pure. And it's not much different, the stuff you get in a, you know, an Alco pop 
soft drink and alcohol and what's in the car. The only difference is the one that's in the car is mixed with petrol and the one that's in the can is, drink, is mixed with soft drink. Okay. But um, there's so a So it's going to make my Mini go fast? Well, it might do, yeah, because I have a feeling that with the compression ratio your engine's got and with forced induction and with adding boost and with the supercharger being a bit unknown as to how much boost it'll run because it's yeah. totally dependent on the size of those pulleys, I think on petrol we won't make we're not going to make a lot of power on petrol without like further refining everything. Yeah. Um, but I think with ethanol and the fact you can you can choose means we're going to get a really good power figure. And importantly, it's going to be better to drive. Did you say so I can chew? As in chew chew? That's what I meant. Yes. Nice. Um, like importantly, it's going to be it's going to be reliable because you don't want to explode your engine. So for example, in some ways the engines are similar, right? They're both originally meant to be naturally aspirated. In this case, it's a six cylinder that runs really high compression. I don't know what your factory compression is, but I have a feeling it's not low. Um, and so in this case, this car, or like on petrol, the best I think we could get from it is a power figure was 210 or 220 kilowatts, which is not far off the 195 yeah. um, that, that it probably came with from the factory. Right. But on ethanol, you go like this. Supergrams is off its balls. But you know what? You know what the best part about that is. It would it would still feel fast on petrol. But what ethanol does, and tuners will, will go into more detail about this, but it spools up the turbo really quickly right. because you've got more fuel volume going through, and that just means quicker boost. So a lot of people will say their car feels more grunty. Now in your case, it's going to get that motor going quicker, and you're going to get your boost because it's going to wind up the supercharger. And there's a whole lot of reasons that you know we'll discover once we're on the dyno, I'm sure. But that is kind of the big one. But importantly, the E Flex you see here yep. is a ratio of how much fuel and importantly also if you've got a full tank of ethanol E85 and you want and you're somewhere where you can't get ethanol you can go and put 98 in it and it might bring the ratio and down to 50 down to 50 or 60 50 percent 60 percent and the benefits the more alcohol fuel you've got in there the benefits are, are greater obviously but that's the whole point of it the point is it doesn't mean you can only run ethanol if you run an ethanol you're stuck yeah yeah you can put fuel and petrol in a drive home i consider it a limp home tune i've yeah. only had to do it twice and both times put some 98 in it cruise it home off boost and then put ethanol back in and away you go but that's, that's all stuff awesome. we can we can play with on the dyno and it, yeah. but it just gives you so much more options as well yeah um with having better fuel and a lot of people call it race fuel at the pump there's downsides to it it uses more you know, there's there's chances of breaking engines, all this kind of stuff. But like any kind of tuning and pushing the envelope, because JDM Mini race car. Because why not? Because let's do it. Because it'll be an adventure. Well, with that little bit of first-hand inspiration, now I can get back to the Mini. Next up, I'm installing an air temperature sensor in the new intake pipe, so it can feed the ECU with all sorts of mad data. Next up, we are back to plumbing and we've got our hands on some quality hose. We can now also install our multi-injector setup on the car. Well, this is looking awesome, but of course it is not so straightforward. Yes, we have another problem. So we thought we were really clever reusing this bracket from the factory ECU and putting our Haltech in, and it does actually fit perfectly. The only problem is, Miles, this now doesn't fit, and this has got to have an air filter on it as well. So. We do have a little bit of room under this. It's a whole lot more cramped on this side of the car because of the air conditioning that's on the JDM Minis. So we're gonna modify this bracket and try and move the whole thing down enough so that this fits on. And then we've also got enough room for the air filter on there as well. Okay, so I'm going to make up a new bracket and try and find somewhere to install this ECU. We are seriously running out of room though in the engine bay. Meanwhile, Marty is welding up the catalytic converter and Dose Vader is continuing to plumb up the fuel system. We're 
we're so, so close now. It's been a really, really epic day today. Busier than ever. You seen a little nut around mutton? Maybe. Have you seen one of these somewhere? Um, cleanliness hasn't been, I mean, we've been smashing through it now. Is that it? Where? That. I'm going to go over here, Martin, to the mad stash. Yeah, I'm feeling good, but it's one of those things when you've got no instructions and there's so much stuff that's done custom, you can never really know what's going to work and what's not going to work. So it's just one of those things where you just have to do it and along the way sometimes you go cool well, that didn't work and that didn't fit but when you've got resourceful mad people around you such as yourself and the stint on over there dose vadering himself into infinity you can't really ask for much more and it's been awesome man just doing mini stuff every single day supercharging things and um i've loved it it's been great and we can do it all here man our new space it's like we haven't had to go and buy any tools yet so that's a um it's safe to say we've learned a thing or two over the years. A couple of things. Not a lot. <laughs> Learn a little bit. No, it's good man. I'm I'm so excited. I am I'm legitimately more excited than I've ever been with any Mighty Mods project in history. I'm also a little bit more nervous because the car means so much to me and so um I'm 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 an, I'm a little bit worried, but it's kind of offset by knowing that we've got masters over here, you know. Um, but I just, I just can't wait to drive it and I know you can't wait to hear it. Ah, oh. it's going to be great. And just to see what kind of percentage of power we make. I'm, I'm going to be really happy. I know it's crazy, but I'm going to be really happy with 25%. We got a 25% power increase. You'll feel 25%. Um, yeah, if we get that, I'm... I'm going to be stoked, man. It's going to be awesome. It's time to install our adjustable fuel pressure regulator, which is going to maintain the right amount of fuel pressure. But there's one problem. Our tools are too big. So, man, that's our fuel regulator. It is. And it's on this custom mad little bracket here. But we don't have a spinner that fits into there. So I do understand that you're sacrificing a spanner to the turbo Yoda gods. Um, sacrificing a spanner to our supercharging Odyssey. Um, and it's a 5.8 spanner. Um, you know, they still use Imperial stuff in England and America and some other places, um, which we don't have much of here because most of the cars we work on are always metric. So we do have one spanner. It's a fairly nice spanner, but it's about to be shaved. Yes. A Brazilian spanner, isn't it, Martin? About to get Brazilian. Uh, it's too thick. Doesn't fit. I'm going to show the people, Martin. That there doesn't go. So it's going to get Brazilian. Once it's shaved, our tool should fit in perfectly. The rear part of the exhaust is finished so it's ready to throw back on the Mini. Because of the changes we've made in the engine bay, our throttle cable is now way too long, so we're going to have to head down to the bike shop to get a cable end to fix it. Meanwhile, yep, you guessed it, more hose. Vader is putting the final touches on our MAD exhaust system and once that is finished it's ready to install back on the car. Yes, it is all coming together. Our O2 sensor is getting plugged into a bung that's in the catalytic converter and then wires run up to the ECU in the engine bay. And yes, with my new custom bracket, the ECU is finally installed. Thanks so much for coming to hang with us. You're welcome. Um, it's been probably been some of the best times working on a car I've ever had in my life. And extremely educational. Very. Yep. I love it, it man. Wonderful. 
Um, so good to be you, Team Work Experience Kid. Oh, awesome. It was great. And hopefully next time you guys see the car, uh, it'll be starting. Uh, there's only a couple of things left to do, which is a cooling system. Mm -hmm. Well, it's a couple of hoses anyway. A few hoses and we'll be done. Yeah, and that's it. But that's all we have time for this time. So, of course, keep your eyeballs on the Faceballs. That's facebook.com forward slash mighty car mods. And, of course, thank you so much, of course, to AIM Auto for coming and hanging out with us. It's been awesome to have you here, Miles. Absolute legend. A pleasure. mini champion. And um, that's it, man. Next time on Mighty Car Mods. You know how we said there wasn't much more to do? Well, we were wrong. Very wrong.